Many of the objections to time change are coming from sleep experts who argue that the practice is taking away that important rest. We all know that we could need uh, more sleep near, right? So joining me now with uh, the reason she believes that daylight saving time should end is Dr. Sonia Ancoli Israel with UC San Diego Center for Circadian Biology. Dr. Sonia, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks okay. for having me. Of course. Uh, so we have this big change, biannual change that's happening on Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, the daylight saving time means that we get darker mornings, lighter evenings. Right. What are some of the negative impacts? I know a lot of people look forward to the sunsets later on, a little bit more daylight, especially in those summer months. But maybe what are some of the negative impacts? Yeah, so first of all, it's the same amount of daylight. Mm -hmm. It's just shifting. And the problem is, is we need morning light for better health and better sleep. Our sleep is controlled by our circadian mm -hmm. rhythms, which are our biological rhythms. And our circadian rhythms are controlled by a master clock in our brain, which controls many other clocks that mm -hmm. we find throughout our body. And our circadian rhythms tend to run a little longer than 24 hours. So in order to stay in sync with the environment, we need to resync that clock. And the way that clock gets resynced to the environment is with morning light. Mm, and we get that when we and abolish we get, daylight saving yeah, so time. Yeah, so standard time, we get morning light. We wake up and the sun is out, the light is out. It's easier to wake up. It improves our sleep. When the, when the sun comes up later, especially mm -hmm. on the western uh, time zones, uh, which is, of course, us in Here San, San Diego. Diego. Yeah, we're waking up in the dark and our clocks don't have a chance to reset and that has all sorts of health and performance consequences. Yeah, I was reading your opinion piece on this and you're just like you mentioned, the western edges yeah. of time zones like us here in San Diego, uh, we get approximately 19 minutes less sleep every night than some people on the eastern edges. So can you talk a little bit more about those specific health impacts? Right, so sleep deprivation, whether it's because we're not in bed long enough or we're having problems with sleep, which is what happens when we don't get enough light can result in poor performance, mm -hmm. um, increased accidents on the road, mm -hmm. and the health consequences, which include cardiovascular disease, depression, diabetes, obesity, and even increased risk of some forms of cancer. Oh, wow, okay, and, I didn't know that one. Yeah. So let's talk about kind of the other side of this too, because there's pros and cons that we hear from both sides, right? right? Of so course. some of the advocates for keeping daylight saving time, they advocate that we're having longer evening. It's good for tourism, right? People tend to stay out longer. But the other part I think is more of a solid argument with that perspective is that there is more safety involved in terms of reducing pedestrian deaths because there is a little bit more daylight, let's say for after school activities and that evening commute. What are your thoughts? around that so we tried that and the truth is it doesn't make any difference in all those things that we thought it would um, you don't see increases in accidents you don't see you know I mean yes it's nice when it's light late mm -hmm. but is that worth the negative health effects of not getting the morning light right that's, that's a good that's, question yeah, that's what you have to weigh out and for us in the field we feel the health benefits of morning light are much more important than enjoying that sunset a little later in the okay. day. Okay, all right, I know, yeah. I know. I get out late, so I get to, I have to miss it when yeah. I'm here at work, but yeah. I'll have to make sure to watch it on the weekends, right? Um, you know, as Congress and, you know, people at the congressional level start to debate this topic, we know that it takes quite a while for them to make a decision over there at Capitol Hill. Yeah. Um, what can we do to prepare for daylight saving time? I know that we voted to have some sort of change as Americans here. We did that in 2018, but until Congress and the president sign off on some sort of change, whether it's keeping daylight saving yeah. time or standard time, what can we do just to prepare our bodies for this time change on Sunday? So um, the key always is listening to your body. When you get tired, go to sleep. Don't go to sleep if you're not tired because mm -hmm. that just means you, you get into bed because the clock is telling you mm -hmm. you should but you're gonna to toss and turn and be awake, which just perpetuates any problem mm -hmm. you might have. Mm -hmm. The other key is to get up at the same time every day. So even though there's that clock change and your body may not be ready, you need to get up. Okay. Uh, it's actually a little easier to get up 
with the clock change sure. when the light is out sure. there. When right. it's dark, it's harder to wake up. Exactly. But you have to try to get up at the same time every day, and that also will help synchronize okay. our internal clock. So the consistency there is Consistency key and listen to your body. Okay. Dr. Yeah. Sonia Ancoli Israel with UC San Diego, thank you so much for your thank expertise you. and your advice on all of this. Pleasure. All right.